Your first time getting a pump is really exciting until you actually open it and see how many parts come with it. And then you probably feel overwhelmed and panicked. So today I want to give you a tutorial on how to assemble a Spectra S1 or S2 pump, what these pieces are for, how to take care of them and clean them. So to start with, go ahead and unbox the pump, set out all the pieces in front of you and get rid of the wrappers so they're not in the way. Let's start by looking at the flanges. That's this piece. These are also sometimes called breast shields. I like to call them flanges. We wanna fit your flange to your nipple size, not your breast size. To find out what sizes you have, look on this part of the tunnel and it will be written in millimeters. This one is a Spectra 24 millimeter flange. Most of the time, Spectra pumps will come with two 24 millimeter flanges and two 28 millimeter flanges. We wanna fit it to your nipple size, not your breast size. So for now, just eyeball it. That measurement is measuring the diameter of this tunnel right here. And we want this diameter to be close to your nipple size. So most women are gonna start off with the 24s. For most women, the diameter of the 28 would be a lot bigger than their nipple. So for now, just go with that. Um, but later, watch my video specifically on getting the right size pump flange. There are other sizes available besides what comes in your box. There's 20 millimeter, 24, 28, and 32 millimeter available. So once you have the two that you feel like just eyeballing it, look closest to your nipple diameter, then we're gonna start putting the rest of the pieces together. The first thing I wanna to put together are the backflow protectors. That's these pieces and the silicone valve that goes in between them. So find your smaller of the two sides, which would be this one, and one of your silicone valves, and it fits perfectly into that smaller size. So the silicone valve goes into the smaller side of this backflow protector. You put it together and it has a lip that should come around the edges. So get it pressed in nice and tight with the lip around it. Then take the bigger side and it goes over top and you just press it together. Repeat with the other one. The smaller side of the backflow protector the silicone valve, wrap it around, make sure you get the lip over the edges, and then the larger piece, sandwiches over that. Now you've got two assembled, and these go on the back of the flange. If you look, you'll see there's a skinny knob and a fat knob. The fat knob connects to your flange. You can push or twist it together like this. There we go. Repeat that with the other one. You have the breast flange, you have the backflow protector, the fat knob goes into here. And I know these pieces can seem a little complicated and overwhelming right now. I promise you this will become second nature before long. Next, we're gonna get our duckbill valves. That's this piece. It goes down here on the bottom of the flange. The valve's purpose is to help create vacuum suction and it lets out the milk incrementally. It opens up like this. And this piece tends to wear out faster than any of the other pieces on your pump. So you may have to replace this one somewhat regularly. If you're just pumping occasionally, you can replace it every two to three months. If you pump a lot, you should replace it at least monthly. If you ever feel like your pump is not pulling with the same vacuum suction that it once had, most of the time it's because this piece is worn out and they're not very expensive to replace. Once you have that on, you can put on your bottles. You should feel a little click when it's screwed on properly. Tuck bill valve in here. When it's time to clean your pump and take these pieces off, um, unscrew it from the bottle and just gently squeeze right here to help any milk that's still inside this valve come out so you can save every last drop. Next, we attach the tubing to the backflow preventer. It goes right on here. The purpose of the backflow preventer is to keep milk from getting from your flange 
into your tubing, and then into your motor. This is one of the things that makes Spectra such a great quality pump. A lot of pumps don't have this piece, and a little bit of milk gets into the tubing, and it can get into the motor, and that can lead to mold and bacteria growth over time in the motor. And the tubing of the other pumps is very difficult to clean and dry and is known for growing mold as well. With Spectra, you never ever clean the tubing. It never becomes contaminated thanks to this valve. So that's one of the great things about this part. These backflow protectors, we do recommend replacing as well, usually not as often as the little duckbill valve inside. This piece, if you're pumping frequently, you may wanna replace every two to three months. And if you're pumping just occasionally, maybe every six months. So we've got this attached. We'll attach the next one. So tube goes onto there. All right, and then your tubing attaches to your motor. If you look right here, there's a place to put two tubes onto your motor. If for some reason you're only pumping one breast at a time, you use this cap to cover up the other opening and that keeps you from losing suction strength. So if you're pumping just one breast, use the cap to cover the other opening. If you're pumping both breasts, which is normally the case, you leave that cap open. So go ahead and attach your tubes over these openings. And voila, you have it assembled. A quick tutorial on what the buttons are. I have a separate video that goes in depth on how to set your pump settings for the best milk production. Right now, I just wanna show you what those buttons are. Start by turning on your pump. On this side, you'll see the cycle buttons. Cycle is the speed with which it pulls and releases. So how quick the cycles are, and you can make it faster or slower. On this side is your vacuum buttons. These buttons change how strong the vacuum suction is and that can be adjusted up and down. Here in the middle, this wave-like button switches it from one mode to the next for best milk flow. And I explain that more in my next video. And then of course your power button, you also have a night light. And right here in the middle, it tells you how long you've been pumping. A couple of other things, if you have the blue pump like this, the Spectre S1, it comes with the built-in rechargeable battery. So if you leave it plugged in for a couple hours and it's fully charged, it should run on the battery for about three hours. And each little bar you see on that battery indicator represents about an hour of use. So it gives you a pretty good estimate of how many pump sessions you can fit in before needing to recharge. It's a lot. For most working women, if you charge it overnight, you should be able to run it all day at work without needing to plug it in or recharge. If you have the Spectra S2, which is the pink pump, you'll need to keep it plugged in, but you can buy a car adapter that lets you plug it in the car. Let's look real quick at the bottles as well. So when you're pumping, obviously this is the part connected to your flange. If you are using your bottles just for milk storage and not feeding the baby, then you can use this little pink piece inside the bottle cap and put that on here. And it takes up a lot less space in your cooler or your refrigerator and it's easier to stack. So if you only use the bottles for milk storage, use that little cap on top. If you're gonna be feeding it to baby, you can pop that piece out and the nipple can go on here. And you've got a cap to keep it from leaking. Um, finally, let's go over a couple of quick tips for cleaning. So if you're gonna be pumping a couple of times a day, the fastest way to manage the cleaning is to actually store it in the refrigerator in between pump sessions. If you look carefully at your pump, right here you'll see a tab on the backflow preventer. This is so that you can easily unhook it from your pump. This part of your pump never needs to be disassembled or washed. It doesn't get any milk on it and it should stay clean. 
these are the pieces that need to be washed. And these are the pieces that if you're gonna pump a couple times in a day, you can put this whole thing in your refrigerator in between pump sessions. The milk coating the inside of the flange and through here helps to actually keep it clean and fresh because breast milk is antibacteria, antibacterial. So it helps to fight off the germs. This, um, you can especially help in keeping your parts clean by washing your hands before you touch everything and before pumping. Studies have found that it's actually mom's hands that are the most likely to contaminate her milk. So if your hands are clean, everything else is gonna be great. So this can go in your refrigerator or your cooler in between pump sessions. When you get it back out to pump at your next pump session, you just reconnect it. Voila, and then you're ready to pump. At the end of the day, when you're done, done pumping for the day, then take everything apart and wash everything thoroughly on this, all of these pieces right here. So you take off the membrane, you wash this, you take off this backflow piece, twist or pull, obviously your bottle. The valve here, I recommend squeezing it gently in case there's any last bits of milk you wanna save in your bottle and then pull it off and that gets washed in this. And all of these parts I just showed you are dishwasher safe on your top rack. So you could put them in your top rack. If you have a basket, you can put these smaller pieces inside the basket. Spectre does not recommend sanitizing your pump parts other than the very first time you use your pump. The main reason for that is excess heat really breaks down plastic. It's not healthy for your baby and it can make the parts wear out more quickly than they should. If your baby has a normal immune system, then they are totally fine with your, the parts being hand washed or dishwasher washed. One thing we don't recommend is soaking the parts. One sad incident happened where a baby died due to the contamination of the pump parts being soaked in water. And the water in the sink is a lot more likely to have had germs already there in the sink um, that can contaminate the parts as they soak in the water and be more difficult to remove and clean afterwards. So even though it might make you think that they're gonna get cleaner because they're soaking in water, it actually can have the opposite effect. So leave it on your countertop or in your refrigerator until you're ready to wash it. And that's it for this time. Please check out the other videos on my YouTube channel to learn more about how to properly fit your flanges to your nipple size and also how to find the perfect settings for your pump.